We are live Sunday night. You ready to get started? <laughs> no, I gotta clear my thoughts. We like literally just got the kids in bed, so we gotta practice getting them down sooner so I can like clear my head. And I have a, a, a Zoom meeting that ends every Sunday night at like 8 40. So we get out of church at 7 30, zip home. So he's on his Zoom at 8 while we're like, here, quick, kids, find food and get PJs on and get into bed. And we're going to start a Zoom at 9 with great info. <laughs> we do have good info here. <laughs> All right. So why don't you get started? No, uh, no, you start. Okay. We'll this open we with did. prayer or something. Maybe that will help. All right. I'll open with prayer. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come together tonight as a team. I just thank you, Lord, for... Your words, you know that what we need to hear and talk through as a team so we can grow and just expand our businesses. And so I just pray, Lord, that the words that we speak tonight, they would bless and honor you, that your words would be spoken, not ours, for what us and the rest of the team need to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. So we got like um, three or four topics that we're going to uh, cover tonight. And um, Krista had written some notes, and I not in my head yes that those are good notes so <laughs> why don't you start talking on the love walk all right these are totally going to be different than like the how to's or how to follow up or anything like that we've just been talking about team culture and what we desire for our team to be and what we'll be known for um so these are more i don't know how would you even like characterize it it's just the heart side i guess of of the business, but it's, I think, just as important, if not more important, than the um, skill sets. Because one of the first things I wrote is you can know a little bit about these products, not every little detail about them, but still go far if you know how to love people. Um, and I, I genuinely believe that. I don't believe it's those that know the most about in the ingredients or the science behind Slim or uh, what probiotic is best on the market really those are facts and they're really good to know and as you go through the journey you'll learn more and more um but i really believe your character and your love walk and who you are and the way you treat people how genuine you are will go a lot further than the product knowledge will um what's even even like when we talk about facts tell and testimony sell it's along the same lines but um it's easy to get hung up on the fact that i don't know everything about these products but really the relationships are so much more important. And um, I mean, golly, if I just think to the beginning of our business, for a long time, I was very transparent with people that I really knew nothing about what Slim was, <laughs> but yet people were joining as customers and as ambassadors. Um, but that's because we have relationship and they knew that I really cared about them and I cared about their health and they knew I was honest about my story. And so I was jotting down notes just on whatever came to me fast, <laughs> as whatever was coming in that moment while my brain was still clear I had a quiet moment in our room to just tuck away and just thought I'm gonna get this out now because I don't know if my thoughts will be coming as clear later which is so <laughs> true right now um, but this is a people business you're gonna be dealing with all kinds of people people that are really easy to get along with and people that may not be easy to get along with people that are really easy to love and people that may not be as easy to love that you may have a little bit of a journey unfolding people that are at all different stages of life all different seasons of life they may be going through a very stressful season or they could be on cloud nine and your ability to love them no matter where they're at on their journey is really key i believe to um to success really in any area of life um, but really in this business and so I wrote down a few books that if any of these strike a chord with you write down the title or just message me later one is personality plus is one of mine and Chad's favorites I've read it a few different times but it kind of goes over all different personalities of people that you will come across and if you can recognize the personality trait it's really easy to understand the person so for instance, Chad and I have very different personalities. He's, he's what would be called a choleric personality, like this A driver mentality. And I was like a combination of the two that are the opposite of him. And the more I read that book, the more it helped our marriage because I was able to understand his personality. That if he was focused, he wasn't angry, he was just really focused. Just a small example that 
Um, I love that book, Personality Plus. Great for your marriage, great for understanding your your kids, great for understanding future customers and team members. Because if you can recognize the personality, you can more easily um, engage in a relationship with them because you'll kind of get how their brain works a little bit. Another one is How to Win Friends and Influence People. I think you were the first to even send that to me <laughs> when we first met. Chad loved personal, what are they called, PMA? Positive, First, positive, positive mental mm -hmm. attitude. He was sending me these books. I thought, what are these books about people skills? And he knew I needed it more than I realized. Um, what was the other thing? Do you have something? Yeah. I feel like you go for it. <laughs> so, um, I'm very insistent or I guess it, something that's big inside of me is that you, you're, it's called the law of the lid. And if John Maxwell talks about it and that you're only going to grow to the point of where you're at mentally and how you believe in yourself and what, what you picture other scene of yourself. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people go in life and they're trying to succeed and they keep hitting this lid of success. And that lid is determined by what we're putting inside of ourselves, whether it's, you know, through prayer, through the word, uh, and then through positive mental attitude books. And that a lot of people, you know, I know for myself is that growing up, I just had a, a negative self-esteem. And so I thought I had a positive one. I thought I was really uh, confident, but really I was just, I was, um, cocky and I, I was uh, arrogant and I, I might, I, I didn't know that until I started reading these books. I was like, wow, I'm really negative. And I, wow, I, I really, uh, put down people a lot in order to myself, make myself look better. And so some of these books that Krista mentioned, like how to win friends and influence people, that was a game changer for me is when I started just learning, wow, I should be listening 80% of the time and talking 20% of the time when I'm talking to a new person and asking 80% of the questions and listening. Um, and so these things, once, once, uh, you know, our team starts, continues it going to full stride in terms of these books and digesting these books on a regular basis, I believe we'll start to see our, our teams continue to, to just, you know, grow beyond where we're at right now. So I just want to add that. Yeah. That's good. And you really attract who you are too. So yeah. the more we grow as, as individuals and in our self-confidence and our people skills, reaching out to others, um, really will change who you are attracting into your business as well. Um, I wrote these questions. Are you quick tempered or are you easily offended? Are you a people pleaser or are you easily hurt? Do you have your feelings hurt easily? These are things that, um, it's like the pruning side of this business. I don't know why. Why is it more than any other, I feel like, in industry? Or maybe because it's just because I haven't people. had this. Yeah. Uh, There's such a learning curve, and it's not always fun or easy, but who you become through this journey in learning how to deal with people, um, I think is one of the neatest things and is just yeah. growing as a person. If I look back to even who I was a year ago, if I got like one negative comment or a message that they like read a negative review online or something. I mean, it would just send me spiraling. Like, Oh my goodness, I can't even do this. And now it's like, Oh, that's nothing. It really is. Um, but that's just some of the personal growth that comes. So embrace it, but also it's okay to hone in on an area. Um, if you find that it's hard to love people to hone in on that, to hone in on, okay, what has happened in my life? Have I been hurt and I'm still harboring unforgiveness? Well, let's hone in on that and find victory there because it'll free you up to love others. Um, if you're struggling in loving yourself, let's work on that to free yourself up so that you are able to pour then into the lives of others. My favorite book, probably one of, probably one of the most life-changing books for me is called The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. Um, I went in, I've read it now like three or four times, but I went into it the first time thinking I probably don't have much bitterness or resentment. And it was just neat as I continued to read that book, allowing the Lord to bring things into remembrance. Um, it really though was eye opening to um, just how destructive it can be. If you are holding on to any hurts from your past or any pain or resentment or anger and what that does to you. So I highly recommend that if that strikes a chord at all with you. Another one is 
by Joyce Meyer that Chad bought for me. I think it was a major hint. <laughs> is that the name of it, though? It's on being a people pleaser. And his name, something like that. I can't remember the name right now, but we could Google it. Um, because that's, that was a huge part of who I was. Um, I don't like letting people down. And so um, I don't like making decisions that others might not agree with. Or, but in network marketing, you learn really quickly. Like you can't go off the opinions of others. Not everyone will like what you're doing. Not everyone believes in network marketing. Not everyone is well informed about what network marketing is and what a beautiful industry it can be when it's done right. Um, so yeah, they're people pleaser book, whatever it's called, you know. I'll tell me. Go for it. Um, so next on the list is be positive. And I know that, like I just said, I think most people say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm positive. And, and maybe some, some of our friends would say, I'm, I'm positive that you're negative, but, um, no, I'm just kidding. Not you guys, the other people, you guys, <laughs> you guys are positively awesome. Um, but we have to, we create this, uh, culture on Facebook and people kind of grow to expect something on Facebook. Maybe it's, um, you know, cynicism, maybe it's a, a political uh, slant, maybe, you know, you, even before Plexus, maybe you've been known for your post about Christ or, or whatever it is. We all kind of are known for something. And um, just you just want to be careful because your Facebook page is is kind of like your Super Bowl ad, I mean, every day. And, and, um, and so what, what you post on there, you know, the, the, you want to be transparent, you want to be real, but you don't want to be negative. And so there's this fine line that you can cross if, if you become, um, you know, it's good to share and, and good to be open and transparent and vulnerable with people. Uh, I really believe that's a, a huge reason why our business took off so quickly was because Krista was so uh, vulnerable. But um, here's just an example um, that um, probably about a month and a half ago, we had, we had a plumbing issue in the house and had this plumber come over and I'll give you the short story, but he was like 90 years old and, and uh, he walked very slow and uh, totally hard to understand. Very hard to understand. And I found out that night where the term plumber's bottom came into existence. And so I thought it was hilarious in my mind. I'm just playing. I'm like, this is an amazing Facebook post. I was like, and so I literally took like, probably 20 minutes to put together this really cute, and I, I thought it was cute, little Facebook post, kind of just saying, I can't believe this just happened, blah, 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 going all through this detail. and uh, But it wasn't edifying. It wasn't building that gentleman up. It, it was just really for my own amusement and thought some other people would probably think I was pretty funny, to be honest with you. <laughs> and so um, so I get there, I, I and, and I, I lock it in, and, and I – Inside, there's this little itching inside of me, and, it, and uh, us Christians know that that's the Holy Spirit saying, "No, don't do that. You're not that. That's not even supposed to go out there in Facebook world." But I overrode it, put it out there, and um, Krista came home, and 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 I was like, "You wouldn't believe what happened." This, and she's like, "Really?" So yeah, go check one of my Facebook posts. She's like, "What?" And so she checked out my. She's like, "Chad, you can't. You have to delete that." That's such a bad representation of you. And I sat there for a second and I was like, you know, I was kind of going through this inner turmoil. I was like, well, I want to be transparent. I want to be <laughs> open with my life and things happen. I want to be funny. And this is a little bit of me. And, but then on the other side, I was like, you know what? It's, she's right. There, there's no value that anyone's going to get from seeing my negative uh, viewpoint of this horrible situation that happened to me. Still traumatized. <laughs> but, uh, but, <laughs> she was right in that I was, I was doing myself and our business a disservice by posting something, you know, it is it, slightly negative on, on my, on my wall. And so I just want to encourage you is that just think about when you make a post, don't do a Chad, think about what, what, what you're posting, what value you're bringing, you know, um, and, and think of your, the people that are receiving it and, and what, what are they going to think about when they see that? And I know, you know, some posts are just quick and fun and you're just, you know, on the fly and that's cool. But um, just just know that you're building a culture, you're building a persona um, and people are coming to it. They'll come to expect one thing or another. So um, 
don't criticize or tear down on Facebook. It's just not the place for it. It, you know, um, I, I, I've, I posted one post on, um, after one of the debates and, and I just, it was an open-ended question and, and I just wanted to, but it, it just gave groundwork. And of course I, I wasn't even siding on one way or another. I just kind of threw out a, a, a very novice, uh, um, you know, neutral, uh, uh post on, on the debates and man, two people were just like lighting up my page left and right. I was like, what did I open myself up to? And so it's just, it, it was, it was a bad, bad idea. Um, if, if you went through something really negative in your day, you're stuck in traffic, you were, uh, what your tire pops, whatever. I would just encourage you to just, you know, if you need to send that somewhere, just send it an email to your spouse or something, say, <laughs> had a bad day or whatever. <laughs> Don't put it on Facebook because again, it's just taking up your critical space that you guys own. You know, this, that space mm -hmm. is something you own. Um, and, and know this is that the Facebook world is so much, like a biblical garden. I mean, you're going to sow, you're going to reap what you sow. And if you can sow encouragement and love and, and um, you know, and think of this, when you see a post, here's what I try to do is I try to think of this might not be important to me, but it's very important to them because they took the time to write it, post it, take a picture of it, whatever. And so I just want to encourage them for what they're excited about. I don't have to be excited about it, but I want to be excited for them. If, if that makes sense is that if they, took a picture of Johnny standing up for the first time. You know, I don't even know who Johnny is, you know, half the time it's some high school friend, but Hey, that's awesome. You know, I'm excited because they don't know Malachi and they don't know Judah very well either. So, but just in a, a season or a spirit of encouragement and, and endorsing people, edifying people, because if you do that, they, they, they receive that. And when they see your posts, they want to give back and do the same thing. And of course, uh, you know, that, that, that's one of the tools for Facebook or for our Plexus businesses is, is Facebook. So do you have yeah. anything else to say about that? And that what you were saying of just building others up that draws people to you so much. Our pastor's wife today, when we were coming into church, I had all the kids gathered to sign them all in and she came in and she was like totally just saying all this good stuff about this couple over here. Chris, have you met these guys and just going on and on about this couple? And then she had given me a hug and was telling me how much she appreciated me. And then she's telling them how much she appreciates me. And then she looked at my daughter, Eliana and said, you have such a beautiful spirit. And it was just like every person she was going by, she, it was just coming out of her. And I was so impressed. I love it. I loved, loved, loved it. It was stretching me to go to the next level with that. But the way it, it ministered to me watching her and how good I felt even just about myself. Like it touched me that she would say such sweet things to me and to my daughter, let alone watching her, her way of doing that with ease. It just came natural to her as something I so desire to be better at and to grow in. But um, it's just powerful. The effect you can have on someone complimenting their blouse or their earrings or um, whoever you're coming to, into contact with it opens doors big time for relationships and for what God can do in those relationships. Cause right. you're really not just representing Plexus. Yes. This is a Plexus training, but you're representing Christ. Yeah. That's so. good. That's good. And that, and I just want to add one other thing on that is that, you know, what I'm not saying is you don't want to do something with, um, you're not trying to be manipulative. You're not trying to, um, or fake or not. Or fake, yeah. yourself. You're not trying to be fake. You know, I'm not like if someone, you know, is, got some vile picture on their, on their uh, wall. I'm not like, Hey, that's fantastic. You know, <laughs> or the new facial emoticon or whatever, <laughs> whatever they are. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not liking those. I, I'm talking about if it's just something that, you know, Hey, you know, pro post uh, b before uh, Plexus, I would just go through posts. I never liked anything, never gave thumbs up, never commented on anything inside. I'd be like, that's a cool post scroll, scroll. Oh, that's cool. But now I'm just saying, okay, if I said that in my head, just go ahead and say it on paper or, mm -hmm. or on, on the computer. And so just be intentional about it. Use it as a tool. So we really are talking to the cream of the crop. So it, please do not feel like, Oh my goodness, they're, they've, we've done something wrong. You guys are doing awesome, but this, this will be used in future training. So yeah, and we're recording we really it. are talking to the cream. 
the approval. Oh no, not that one. That, I gotta find that one. Though. David, we just read yours. The the approval fix. How Sorry. to, how to <laughs> read, the re comments. read and chat. <laughs> not not that one, but we'll find it. And we, we'll uh, I'll find it. So go ahead. And All on. right. Sticking with being positive, some of the team page culture that we'd like to be better at teaching is just kind of going off of what you're saying. If you have something really negative, um just like you probably wouldn't want to put that on Facebook, it'd be better to go pray about it or um, talk to your spouse or something, unless you're asking for prayer. Um, same thing on the team page. What we would like to see is if it's a question regarding products or how to help someone troubleshoot, or it's a question regarding how to build your business, um, where to find something on the website, any of those are great to put on the team page because then whoever is available the fastest can chime in there and answer the question. But if it's a negative comment or a question, the best way to go about that would be to go to your direct upline. And if they're not available within the next half day, give them, give them some time to get back, then keep going up your upline. Um, like if you're a few levels down from us. And here's why. You want to be really respectful to the fact that there's many teams within our team page. So say you have a brand new ambassador and you've just added them to the Deary Diamond team page and you're so excited for them, and someone who's on a cross line from you, if that makes sense, um, someone who is still within our team, but they're not in your direct line of sponsorship, they had a ne negative experience. Maybe they wanted to just talk about the shipping or, or whatever, and that's put on the team page, and then we have, you know, negative kind of feeds negative, so then we have comments about that that isn't necessarily what you want your brand new excited ambassador to be seen, correct? And it doesn't edify anybody, it doesn't encourage anybody, it actually brings the tone of the entire team down. So if it's something negative that is not edifying or helpful to anyone on the team, the best place to take it, we prefer, would be your upline. And if we are your direct upline, come to us. If we're not, still feel free to come to us. That would be fine. I think we just want to be mindful of whatever's going on to that team page, knowing that it doesn't just affect your team, it's going to affect other teams as well. And you really want to be um, respectful and mindful, making sure everything we do and say within that is edifying and encouraging and building up and inspiring and creating that excitement and draw for all of the teams within that. Does that make sense, Mike? That's good. And just um, mm. and one of the things that we want to do is a lot of you guys that are on this team page have your own team pages. And so, and which is awesome. We, yes. we once Loving it. people go silver, we want people to have their own team pages because it builds your culture, your identity, and, and uh, it's a good opportunity for you to bless your team. And but um, so this is something that we're just encouraging you guys to do as well. Is that as you're building your team pages out, don't don't allow negative. I mean, you really don't want to say you don't want like the the first post that someone sees on your team page wall. I was just on hold for 45 minutes. <laughs> oh my, oh my word, this is horrible. You know, and it, I it may be true and true. we're working through it, yeah. but you want to be mindful of who else is on the team page that that might not help them at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, um, I say just as, as a whole is that just be really mindful of not like if you have, um, anything going on that you're not too excited about, about, Plexus, your business, the growth of your business, whatever it is, um, like Krista said, bring that up line. Don't bring it. Don't bring it down line. You don't. You, you never want to. You never want to tell your your down line the negative things that are going on in your business. Um, and there's re and it's it's just being protective of what God has given you because you know it's it's just like you know for instance. Um, you know, there's things things that we share with our children, right? But we don't share everything with our children because some of it is just not, not, we're not ready for it. We're not ready for it. It's not age appropriate. And so just similar is that we have younger ambassadors that are in our team and we want to be we want to protect them and nurture them and grow them to a point. Mm -hmm. And so if if we as an upline speak and say, Man, I'm so mad this happened or whatever, then then they feel like Ooh, this isn't good. My leader isn't feeling good about this. And then, and then also then they their feel foundation's their, be shaky. their foundation's shaky, but then they also feel like they have a, a, a 
I guess, the, the freedom to, to do that to their team as well. Mm-hmm. And like I said, and Krista said, you guys are the cream of the crop yeah. here, uh, you know, so we're not speaking at you. We're just, this is kind of coaching for everyone and, and you're mainly your team pages. Mm-hmm. Anything else on that you want to share? Mm-hmm. So, um, and I think overall we have, we've had some good culture. Yeah. I mean, we have a phenomenal culture on our team page. The way everyone's been encouraging one another and welcoming new ambassadors. I'm loving it. I just love seeing everyone's interaction and cheering on their first post, all of it. I am just so proud. So what do we got for time? I have no idea. 8.30. 8.30. So 9.30. 9.30. One thing I wanted to kind of wrap up with that as we're, as we're, um, closing is this is that crystallize your why of what God has placed in your heart and, and um, what I mean by that is uh, it's it's really it's really good to um, it's really good to remind yourself why you're doing this business on a constant basis because it's so easy you know like you know I look at like Jenna she's uh, she's 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 busy with work. She's a busy mama, right? And you, so you got a lot going on, and it's easy just to get into the the mode of life. And and so um, I, I was just thinking of you because I had a mental picture of you cutting hair, and then you got you, you got the kids and all the stuff, and then, then you're singing at church, and, and you got a lot of a lot of good stuff going on in your life, right? And so. Um, but I believe once we get in this business, God gives us these little glimpses as to what we could accomplish through this business and what some, maybe some deep seated dreams that even as we're growing older, we just kind of squelch down mm-hmm. and say, you know, maybe, maybe I don't need that. Or maybe I don't need to send that money to that ministry or, or maybe uh, being debt free and you know, 99% of people aren't debt free. So maybe I, so we start minimizing these dreams. And I just want to encourage you to um, allow yourself to dream, allow yourself to communicate those dreams, share them with your spouses um, how it doesn't matter how crazy big they are, but just keep keep the dreams alive in you. Um, you know, and, and it was just funny because um, some of our dreams are don't even 100% match up. And we had that realization today when we were um, driving down the road, or we were walking down the road, and um, and and Chris, Krista saw a um, a motorhome. And to be honest with you, seven kids in a motorhome. It just doesn't sound like a, a ton of fun for me. Um, but you know what? Just recently, she was like, she's like, okay, I'm going to admit it. I want a motorhome. <laughs> and she's like, like, like she just like let out this secret. Like there's this huge secret. But it was so cool that she felt the freedom to tell me that. And that, you know, all these years, she said, I've had this dream ever since I was a little girl. And, and I was like, really? And I was like, I didn't even know. And, and, and uh, but here God's letting her dream again, letting her have a vehicle to say, you know, this can happen. Here we've seen two of our good friends in, in Plexus now driving around a motorhome, you know, and touring the country. And so um, I just encourage you guys is that if you, you know, open your heart out again, uh, up again to, to say, you know, what, what is it that, that God has uh, for, for me and for, for our life? It's a motorhome. You know, I think he would take enjoyment out of that. And so in Disney, in Disney she was, I was like, the first time I went to Disney, I was like, I, I could care less if I ever went back to Disney. And, and Chris is like secretly. So all of a sudden. Uh, I shut down because I grew up going to Disney in California. So we went on our honeymoon. And I thought it was great. And I had all these nostalgic memories. And he was like, this is crowded and hot and long lines. I do not like Disney. And so I've just like stifled it for 15 years. We haven't done much Disney at all. Just said, we're beach people. We'll just go to the beach instead or do something outdoors. And it's free. We got a lot of kids. It's expensive to do Disney. And so finally last year, I was like, okay, fine. I'm admitting it. I really like Disney. (laughs) (laughs) And I really want tickets. And so my dream for 2016 is season passes. I think God has a sense of humor because here a friend of ours blessed us and surprised us over Christmas with four day passes for our family. I'm like, Lord, like, finally decided I could do it. I could set a goal and I could pay for it. And then now you're going to say, Nope, I'm still your provider. But it is, it's been good to open up to each other just about what our dreams are. And, um, cause not, this is still a business, you know, it's still, it takes effort and it takes work. It takes a lot of heart. There's times that your heart 
feels like it's being stomped on and then other times it feels like you could fly. Um, there's ups and downs to the whole journey and it's beautiful, but sometimes it's mucky too. So having those dreams alive in your heart of your why and why you're doing it and the passion behind it, the people that you're reaching is so important. Yeah. And I think just to, like I said, allow yourself to dream again. And that dream will grow, you know, like even today it's, it's bigger than it was. And, and I can tell you this is that, um, you know, Chris, to see, Chris and I see this as, as, as a type of ministry for, for us and our family is that seeing some of the testimonies, you know, I see Erin on here and, and her testimony of getting free from medication. I mean that like every time I, I, I think about that, I'm just like, wow, how amazing that is that her whole life was just drastically changed mm -hmm. by one decision of us saying, yes, we'll, we'll try the products out. And yes, we'll open up our mouth and talk to other people. That's a ministry. You know, ministry is, is cutting hair. You know, ministry is going to work and doing whatever you're doing and however God uses you. But this is a huge ministry as well. And, and that's on our heart. So anyways, I just, I just encourage you guys to, to dream again, open your heart up. Uh, if you do have anything that's on, on top of your head that you guys want to have a um, Q&A on, feel free to throw it in the chat. And I found the book. Approval Addiction is the people pleaser book that I was trying to think of. Approval Addiction. Approval Addiction. Yep. I don't know if you can see that. You see Joyce. There's Joyce. <laughs> Approval Addiction. You can see it backwards. I literally did not want to make any decision without the approval of others. And the A-OK. -okay. I mean, stepping into Plexus, I knew. I knew I wrestled for two months of whether I would do it. I remember wrestling when I started admitting more of Judah's journey, I knew that not everyone would agree with the fact that I was opening up about everything, <laughs> the shame I felt or, or the ins and outs of what we went through or being questioned by authorities. I knew people would say, you are sharing way too much online <laughs> and um, that's just not necessary. You know, keep that to yourself. That's private information. I knew joining network marketing would not fly with everybody that we knew. I knew changing churches recently was going to be a big decision and so these are things that I've wrestled with, but I have found that each time has gotten easier and easier of getting my eyes on what is God saying to do and what does he think of me and my decisions right now? And am I saying yes to him or am I more concerned with the people around me? So that's one of many books I've had to read along the journey. And in, in, um, in closing, just, just because it's difficult or you haven't had the success that you would like as soon as you'd like, it doesn't mean that, that, that God's not in it. You know, it's every, every, like I mentioned in that, if you listen to that video from earlier last week is that everyone's timing, their season's different. Mm -hmm. We can't compare because, you know, we all want to be further on along in life. But, um, yeah. Sarah Marble took eight months to go silver. Now she's a diamond with one of the most successful teams. I love her story. Yeah. So I don't see any questions. All right, cool. Well, we're going to pray and, and wrap up, but, um, we just, we just love you guys. We appreciate everyone that's on this call tonight and the rest of the teams. And, and we're, we're just so excited that this is, you know, uh, we're so close to some pretty big goals. And um, I was thinking in church tonight, you know, I was thinking, you know, Chris is really close to Senior Ruby uh, this month. And, um, but I was thinking that as, as excited as I am about going to Senior Ruby, I'm even more excited because what it does is it, it creates a void or a vacuum, I guess would be a better word, a vacuum for you to kind of fill that, fill that void is what I'm trying to say is that, so if we go from Ruby to senior Ruby, then people are silvers up into golds and golds up into senior yeah, golds. And just like when we went um, Ruby within a month or two, you know, all of a sudden Aaron, Aaron goes gold. And, and so, and um, so we're excited for you guys, excited for you guys to see your your goals hit and, and the teams grow and we are available day and night to help that happen you know we truly it's you know and I look at a lot of your faces and I think of when, when we saw you guys go silver it was way more exciting than us going ruby even truthfully it's, yeah. it's just like yes <laughs> so all right let's pray Father God we love you we thank you Father you're such a good daddy you're so kind you're so loving Thank you, Lord, for these amazing people on this call, and I thank you, Lord, for them investing their time. I just pray, Lord, that if there was anything that we said tonight that wasn't of you, that it would just dissipate and drop to the ground. But if anything, it was 
something that would help them grow their business or help them grow in their life or help them grow with their kids or their spouses, Father God, that you just continue to resonate that in their heart. Father God, with more than anything, we just want to be followers of you. We want to be doing what you have for us to do in the season that you have for us to do it. But we don't want to waste your time. We don't want to run around and, and, and just do mindless effort, Lord. We want to be pointed. We want to be directed. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for multiplying our time because a lot of us are busy and we got kids, we got jobs and we got things that are going on, but you multiply our time by directing us to the right people. You put pl people on our hearts and place people on our hearts and, and then you give us the right words to speak and, and the right ways to uh, address people in this business. And so as we grow through the word and as we go through these positive mental attitude books and, and just listening to su success stories, we just ask you just continue to mold us and guide us and shape us so that we can be best used for your people. And like I said, that this is a ministry. I believe life is a ministry if you make it so. And, and I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to, to have this platform to bless these people and, and to bless their customers and, and their teammates. And I, I just, I'm just so excited reaching everyone on, the, on this call and where they're going and what, what you have planned for them. And so as we go tonight, I just bless them. I bless their families. I speak life in abundance over the week. I thank you, Father God, for new ambassadors, new customers. I thank you, Father God, for new relationships. I thank you, Lord, for God moments, even things that go way beyond having a new customer. I thank you, Lord, for even at, whether it's through Facebook or work, Lord, that there's new conversations about you because that is what this is all about. And we just love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your time. We thank you, Lord, for this this team in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Just going to check the chat one more time. Can you hear read it? <laughs> My eyes are blurry now. <laughs> yep, Aaron's the only gold on our team right now. So there's a so back but there's a few that are so close. Yeah. What? I think 3 or 4 that are getting really close to gold. Yeah. That's so cool. So it's going to be exciting to see you guys go gold. Some of you guys go silver. A bus like Amy Paul's. Oh, my Landa. Did you see that thing? If you go to Plexus U, go to the Plexus U Facebook page. Um, Jared Abart did like a MTV Cribs type thing with You them. type in Plexus University or Plexus, Plexus U, 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 just U just on Facebook, U. their page. He, they were just being goofy, but they, they gave a tour of the Paul's um, RV bus thing that they had wrapped in plexus like it's all plexus the whole thing and palm trees and, and they just they just for those that don't know who they are they you know when we got started in this business about a year ago they were rubies and now they she went emerald and then he went emerald and so and then he retired from his job mm -hmm. and so now they just moved from hawaii they lived there for four years they they moved to the mainland to the states and they're road schooling all across the country in this in this big uh tour bus and it's all wrapped with plexus like krista was saying so how cool is that just to have the time and money to be able to do that i'll stop recording but if anyone wants to hang around or talk or has questions we will be here and if you need to go tuck your kids in or whatever we love you guys <laughs>